Say hi everyone. Hi YouTube. Welcome back to our channel. Um, we are back and better than ever. No, we're not. Well, at least I'm not. I'm actually a little bit hungover hay. Actually, I'm a lot hungover hay. I don't know if I'm allowed to like talk about that on YouTube for monetization reasons, but let's just say that I'm feeling like a bad and I am trying to not vomit and hurl all over my dog. Um, so today's video is going to be pretty straightforward and easy. I'm just going to show you some of my favorites from June. I know that technically you're going to be watching this in July. Happy July. Um, but yeah, it's technically being filmed in June. So some of these I've had for a while. Some are brand new. Um, it's just some that I've been sort of gravitating to a lot this month or last month I should say and I'm just gonna show them to you and not only that we got a special delivery from Garnished Garden so we are going to unbox that and I'm gonna show you what we got are you ready to go should we show them our favorite plants yeah do you want to help me yeah okay <laughs> So as usual, I'm in my jammies and um, just a sort of forewarning, you might hear a pug in the background. <laughs> so if the snoring bothers you, this is not going to be the video for you. So thank you for stopping by and um, <laughs> hold on fudge. Okay, so again, my forewarning is you might maybe hear the audio or hear the air conditioning in the audio because it is crazy hot right now. This is the current temperature in Celsius and the peak of the heat is gonna be around 4 or 5 p.m. I think. And let me just switch it over to Fahrenheit because I have no idea what any of those numbers mean. So this makes more sense to me. It is 97 degrees right now and at the peak of the heat it's gonna be 108 at 4 p.m. So, we have the AC on full blast because even though it's air conditioned, these big windows really just let in all of that heat and I cannot afford to have a puppy with heat stroke. So air conditioning is on. Yes, this is tucked in because this sports bra that I'm wearing right now is kind of itchy right here. So instead of changing, I'm just tucking it in and now we're gonna call it fashion. So before I start, I wanted to show you a package that just arrived from my friend Sarah over at Garnished Garden and I am so so excited for this honestly super excited yeah let me try and open this without showing you my address is on the edge of his seat. Oh my gosh. Let's see what the clue is. <gasps> I am screaming. Okay, let's try and get this on film. Sorry for the crap lighting. It's like, yeah, I should have filmed earlier, but. Whoa. Oh my word. This is stunning. I hope Pudge doesn't think it's his toy. No, this is not for you. You can have this though. No, I know, this is not for you. Can I wipe your eyes? Why do you always have eye boogies? Gross. So yeah, this is the Garnished Garden Pillodendron. I have been wanting one for so long. Um, I think I might have a discount code to share with you guys. I'm not sure if it's going to be ready by the time this video goes up, but, um, just if you follow me on Instagram, I'll be able to share it. But 
I'm so happy with it. Oh my gosh, it's so adorable. I want to also get the, eventually, the Claire Nervium. She released outdoor pillows as well. So I might have to do that for my balcony refresh coming up. But this is so adorable. I'm obsessed. Okay, so this is going to be, I'm going to yeet this. Bye. And now we have a new one. Oh my gosh, my hair is everywhere. No, no, we're not doing that. No, not with that one. You have a basket full of toys. This is mommy's. This is mommy's toy. You have to be gentle, okay? Be gentle. Don't touch it. Before I start, um, this is going to be 10 of my June plant favorites and then five of my like plant related item favorites, I guess. And I just got this, but this is already one of mine. So let's say we're doing six plant favorites. So this is gonna be number six. This fabric is beautiful. It's such a, like a nice rich green color. It is so hot. I am freaking dying. <sighs> okay. Product placement. So the first plant that I'm going to be showing is one of my newer purchases. And this is a Euphorbia globosa. I think I'm saying that right. This was a total import, import <laughs> impulse purchase when I did a group order with my friends. The product photo didn't look as cute as this, to be honest. And it was just totally like, oh, it's on sale. It was like $6 or something. And I was pleasantly surprised to find this because honestly this looked nothing like the photo so um, that was a nice surprise I'm still kind of trying to understand the growth pattern of this plant I guess this is like the main plant here and then it's got this random stem that looks like it's going to give a flower or something I, I don't know if euphorbias do they flower I don't know um, but we've got some like new growth here it would focus new growth here new growth there and it's just kind of growing everywhere but some look like just like little leaves so I don't really know what this plant is doing but I'm excited to see what it does learn its growth pattern and try and propagate it so yeah I'm really really excited to have this one in my collection the next one I was a bit hesitant to show because there is a lot of tea surrounding it and just like you know stuff in the community that is still not really agreed on and that is my variegated sodoroy um, most people will say that this is like some kind of virus like mosaic DSMV but just in like all of the aeroid groups that I'm a part of, I haven't seen any of these specimens come back positive with um, with any of those viruses. From what I understand, this is damaged DNA from the lab when they were trying to shrink the internodes of the sodoroy. So all of this variegation that you see here is actually just damaged DNA, which is why it doesn't look like your typical sort of variegation. It very much looks like some kind of disease or something you know all of the new growth that I've had on this plant they look like healthy sodoroy leaves but yeah I think this is just damaged DNA I haven't gone to get it tested myself mainly because I'm not concerned enough to have it tested and to pay for a test but I also have seen people who have this plant if it has too much of the damaged DNA the leaves do start to look a bit wonky and weird um, so I guess like you just want to monitor how much variegation is coming through on the leaves and maybe chop back if too much is coming through but I've had pretty stable variegation on this I've cut it plenty of times um, a ton of my friends have cuttings of this plant uh, I haven't seen a lot of them lately but from the ones I have seen they are pretty much growing exactly like mine so I'm kind of hoping that this one stays the way it is I finally got it on a pole and let me tell you I love using these kinds of moss poles in passive hydro this pole it's like soaking wet I haven't done anything to this pole in over over a week so just the you know moisture from from the, the pond and the leka is keeping the pole nice and wet so I did chop this plant 
a few days ago because my friend Erin had this on her wish list and she always spoils me with so many plants so I just felt like I really wanted to cut the plant for her. Um, but yeah, still got a good sized plant here. I don't plan to chop it anymore. Uh, I, I do want to see this thing kind of beef up a little bit because the poor thing has been chopped so many times in my care. Um, but yeah, this is definitely one of my favorites. The next one I'm going to do might be a surprise to some people, but this is a philodendron. I never know how to say this and I wish someone would help me out. Um, I think it's a Mayoi or Mayoi. I, I want to say Mayoi, but... Um, I've had this one for a while now. It actually came from a much larger plant. All of the leaves were this size. I actually think this was the smallest leaf on it. It was a massive plant. And unfortunately, I don't have a picture of it. Um, but when I took it home from my friend's house, it went from being in her basement, which, um, surprised, well, it wasn't really a basement. It was her first floor, which gets a ton of sun, a ton of light. And it was right in a windowsill and it was getting plenty of warmth and then I took it home and this was like, I think I got this in the fall of last year or something. So it was a lot cooler at my house and then um, it just did not like, it just didn't like the temperature change and the environment change and it completely threw a fit. All of the leaves started yellowing, um, the, the root system rotted. So I just chopped it up and I saved what I could. So this was the last leaf that I had from it. And I was surprised when it actually gave me some decent size leaves. Um, so I just, I just love this plant so much. It reminds me of like a Philodendron elegans, which I just got a small cutting of. And a, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Philodendron polypodioids or something polypoidioides. There is a 0% chance I'm gonna say this right. All right, who has a big one? Oh, this one's so nice. Okay, now I'll show you two pictures. So it reminds me of this plant, which is like, n seriously like number one on my wish list right now. I say that about every plant, but. So this is a really, really big plant. And then you can see just the beauty of a single leaf. And there is like nothing I don't like about this plant. It's beautiful. So anyway, it does remind me of it. Um, it also, like I said, it reminds me of an elegans and I just really, really like the growth pattern and the leaf shape of these kinds of plants. So I'm really happy to have this one in co my collection. I actually just got a second one that's not as big as this one from my friend Erin just because I've been wanting to kind of like fill one pot and just have a massive, my oi, um, maybe on the top of my shelf or something. I feel like I'm gonna puke. Oh gosh, I'm never drinking again. <sighs> okay, I'm fine. Okay, so yeah, this is one of my favorites, Philodendron My oi. The next one is a Pilea glob Globosa. This one was also purchased at the same time as my Euphorbia Globosa. Um, and the this one I'm a little bit scared of. I'm not the most versed in Palea Care, and these just look so delicate. Like, I don't know if you can tell, but there's like these teeny tiny red, sort of like grape looking things that are even smaller than the grape, green grape looking things, and I'm just so scared they're gonna fall off. So I'm trying to not touch this plant too much, I'm just kind of leaving it as it is. Um, I'm still learning about the care, but I've seen lots of photos of these and they're just as cute um, in real life. So I'm really happy to have it. I, see, they're falling off everywhere. A little grape fell off. So yeah, I love this one, but at the same time, I'm also very scared of it. So I'm hoping I can keep this one happy. But yeah, if you're looking for a relatively, I would say cheaper, um palea or like just an interesting looking plant like this is your guy because he's definitely a cool one okay i'm gonna put it down now i just don't want to touch it anymore my friends and i call this the tofu and therium because my friend who imported it grew it inside of a tofu container so this is just the tofu and therium um we actually don't know what kind of hybrid it is 
If I had to guess, maybe there's mag in it. I feel like every Anthurium now has mag um, parentage, but I, I really don't know what it is. It has these funny kind of like closed sinuses, but I separated part of this plant for a friend's birthday. And I think that, I think that one of his leaves did have a, um, well, I think one of his leaves did have a sinus that was fully open. So like, it looks like this one wanted to open. Like it's got like the tiniest little overlap here, but it's still closed for the most part. It's like webbed feet or something. I really love this one. I love the shape of it. I love the color. Um, it's, it's just a pretty simple looking anthurium, but um, ever since my friend showed us this one, it's been on my radar and of course I manifested it into my home. So thank you Plant Happens for this one. This one is a forever anthurium. This one's never leaving my side. <sighs> Gosh. I'm not feeling great, not feeling great. Like you guys know that feeling like the day after when you're just like like nauseous and you like kind of still have the spins and your stomach feels all weird. That's where we're at. The next one I'm gonna show you also might come as a surprise, but I've had this one for a while now. Um, this is a cardboard plant. I think it's also called a cardboard palm, but it's not a palm. I guess it just gets that common name of a palm because it has, it grows like a palm. And look at these two new, uh, what are these? Growth point stems, fronds. I don't know what it is, but um, they're so tiny and cute and fuzzy. I'm just like deceased. But if you haven't seen one of these in person, I first saw these on, where was it? On Instagram. And it was just a really, really close up shot like this. And I was just like intrigued by it because the texture of these leaves are kind of insane. They feel literally just like cardboard. Let's see if you'd hear this. Like it's literally cardboard. It's super, super stiff, but it, it does feel um, kind of like velvet. It's like velvety to the touch. Um, and then the leaf or the stems are spiky, like a rose bush super super spiky this was actually part of a much larger plant i got it from a friend locally and it wasn't doing that well in her care so she gave me a big piece of the plant just to see if i could save it and unfortunately more than half of it died and it wasn't until i moved it out of soil and into passive hydro and put it literally directly in front of a south facing window i thought it was going to burn there but it's done really well and um, it sucks because the algae buildup is insane. I literally just cleaned this out maybe four weeks ago and the algae buildup is already like pretty crazy. So um, I think I am going to eventually move it into a non-clear jar or non-clear pot. But yeah, this one is just like they it's hard to like kind of pick up that texture. The lighting isn't that great right now, but um, I'm just like incredibly fascinated by these leaves. But yeah, definitely one of my favorites this month. I think it's my favorite this month because I'm finally seeing some new growth after I thought this had gone dormant forever, but <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. Oh, I'm trying really, really hard not to barf. I'll do, okay. I'll do this one next. So this one might be kind of obvious if you follow me on, on Instagram, but my Philodendron Glorious is another favorite this month. This one started, I think I've, oh, I've chopped this plant actually. So there were like five more leaves on this thing. It grew so fast. Um, I think this is not even one of the original leaves. I think I chopped off all the original leaves and these all emerged from um, a petiolar sheath. So it was still like in its juvenile form, even though the leaves are pretty big, like look how big this leaf is. So this is the first leaf that's coming out from 
a catafil mm. and the last leaf on it also has some decent size to it so it's been dormant for i want to say like two or three months the last leaf that came before was it this one this one the leaf that came before this one it rotted inside of the petiolar sheath and then it pushed out this catafil so um but i finally have this one on a pole as well and you can see it's i'm not really air layering it so that i can um chop it i just wanted to air layer it so that i could get some roots from the aerial roots that were exposed and be able to fertilize it to kind of give it even more nutrients as it grows larger so yeah i just love that this um plant has just been such a fast grower it's a vigorous grower it's it really does have that hybrid vigor and um, I actually find that it's even easier to keep than a Melanochrysum or a Gloriosum. Like the only one that had trouble coming out of the sheath was the one that came before this one. But I think it was because it was making way for this catafil. So yeah, I would say that I still like the Gloriosum. I would say more than this one. Uh, but this has definitely, it definitely has to be one of my top three favorite philodendron hybrids of all time. This one's my baby getting close to the end here so the next one that I have is an alocaceous scalprum and the story behind this is I was on my explore page one night and somebody had posted a more mature scalprum on their feed and I was like what is this beautiful plant and I was like I have to have it like it's so beautiful but I realized I had no idea where to even find it and honestly I had never even heard of an alocasia scalprum until I saw that photo. So I added it to my Instagram wish list. You know, I have a little wish list on Instagram that I keep track of all the stuff that I'm trying to find. And not even two days later, our local greenhouses released these for $9.99. Like, what were the chances of that? So yeah, I picked up this beauty for $9.99 and it's got this new one on the way. It even has somewhat of like sport variegation. It's kind of hard to explain, but some of the leaves have this sort of like speckly variegation on it. Um, and you can see here just a little bit. I've seen some people locally pick them up and yeah, people have even more variegation than this, but I'm not really into finding the ones with sport variegation unless it's like a monster or something. Like I wouldn't want to own this plant if it was variegated. I love it for the super dark green leaves and yeah, the texture of this is everything. I think this actually could be my favorite alocasia, like ever. And before the Max Kowski, I was like my number one for so long, but this one is just amazing. So it's got like these purple abaxials and the leaf is very, very stiff and super thick. It does remind me, I guess, sort of like a, like a, what is it? Like a dragon skill or I don't know, one of those. But those don't really, those don't really get me. Um, this is much more of an allocation my speed. So I'm super happy to be able to have this in my collection. If I come across any more locally, I'm definitely gonna try and snag it. Just because of how finicky allocations can be, like sometimes they just die back for no reason. Um, I've had an allocation Michaeliziana Maxkowskii that died back and then just never wanted to come back to life. So I'd like to have some backups. I'd like to bring some back to my family in California if I can, but I'm still really, really surprised that this was the price that it was. But I think once people locally start picking them up and realizing what they are, because I feel like not a lot of people know what they are right now, um, I think the prices of them are gonna shoot up. They released Alocasia Silver Dragons and something else locally here, and before they were $9.99, and then when they realized the demand for them, it shot up to like, I think it was like $60 or like $99. So at least I'm glad I was able to grab this one. But yeah, I'm definitely going to grab a few more if I can. Second to last one I'm going to show is one that I showed in my Equigenera unboxing video. And this was my Philodendron Gloriosum either round form or dark form. I don't know which one it is. Um, I just know that I love it. And it had two leaves on it when I first got it. So it had this one, 
and this one. And this is the leaf grown in my care and I am, I, I don't really have words for it. I'm stunned. This is the first new leaf after import. Like, what? What? Look at it, it's perfect. It's literally perfect. It's everything that I've ever wanted in a Gloriosa and more. Like, I'm shook. So I still have it in moss and I didn't get a lot of uh, great feedback on my Equigenera video. I feel like some people are a little bit confused on my method when I import. I think a lot of people are put off by the fact I rip roots off and I'm scraping chunks and just kind of like really going in there with, with nail tools. But um, I want to say that there's a method to my madness Pretty much all of my imports are doing super, super well. And yeah, this one's really happy. So um, no complaints here. I just, I could literally stare at this leaf all day. Just sit here like this. Yeah, it's pretty much my life now. This leaf is almost as big as my pillow. That's wild. <laughs> ah! So yeah. Definite favorite. Love this one so much. I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's completely hardened off and just like darkened. I am keeping it under relatively lower light than I would give a philodendron just because I want to see how dark it can get. But like this sinus is perfection. The overlapping sinus, yes please. These bright red or bright like white veins and this pink hue on the abaxial just no i'm done can't can't do it anymore it's wet that's what she said oh i watered it that's why okay i'm gonna put it back in the pot ew i'm so bloated Ugh. like look at my stomach spilling out of these Ugh. okay um, so the last one that I'm going to show you is the one that I wanted to save for the finale because it was on my wish list for the longest time. Never thought I would find one and um, it finally found me. So I was actually, this was sold to me as a Syningia canescens, but I actually think it's a Syningia leucotrica. Leucotrica. Um, and that's this fuzzy, amazing little guy. And it is just as fuzzy. Can you focus? Thousand dollar camera? There, okay. So it is literally just as fuzzy in real life as it looks in photos and on video. I swear, they feel like, oh my gosh, they feel like little tiny bunny ears. They, they feel like, it feels like it could be an animal, like honestly. It's so just soft, even the stems are soft, the flowers are fuzzy, like everything about this plant is fuzzy besides these little stringy things where the flowers once were. Again, I don't really know the growth pattern of this. Um, I do see some little tiny pups forming down here. I have no idea how to propagate this plant, but I definitely want to learn because I'd like to take one to my mom if I can. I'm just amazed by the fact that this is a plant. Like, how is this a plant? It literally looks like a stuffed animal. I really didn't think I'd be able to find it. It seems like a lot of people can easily find this down in the States, but this is not a plant that pops up here in Canada um, very often. I actually had to buy this from a local collector who is moving out of the country. So yeah, I got pretty lucky, but this is, yeah, I, I just, I don't really have anything else to say. So um, that was actually all 10. I feel like I got through it relatively quickly, but now I'm going to get into my five plant item favorites, but I am going to take a nap first because honestly, I am like five seconds away from, from hurling onto this camera. So I'll be back. Maybe tomorrow, maybe tonight. I don't know. Maybe I'll go into my plant room if it's nighttime. We'll see. I guess you'll see in the next frame. <laughs> Hi, we're filming. Would you like to join me? All right. Okay. 
Let's uh, sit down. Can you sit down? Can you sit down, please? No? Okay. All right. So, <laughs> are you good? Different day, same shirt, still hot, still bloated, but we're here. And um, it is like, I swear, it's like 15 degrees warmer in my plant room. So I'm going to try and get through this next part super quick. Um, what I'm going to show you are five-ish planty things that I've been loving in June. And I say ish because I actually have multiple things for one category. And you'll, you'll see why later. Um, but... I guess I'm just gonna get started. I have my iced tea here in a reused spaghetti container and a McDonald's straw that I've used a questionable amount of times. If you notice that like my voice just randomly cuts out, I've actually been struggling with this for a few years now where um, in the spring and summer I get allergies. Oh, he's just resting his little chin on me. That kills me. Okay, you can lean on me. Okay, here. So in the spring and summer, I get these allergies that just make my throat so scratchy. And it's not like my throat gets like hoarse or like my voice gets um, like raspy. It just, it's like, it sounds normal and then it'll just cut out like no sound. It's really weird. So um, if you notice that I sound a little odd today uh, during certain parts, it's because of my allergies. Um, but yeah, let's just get started. The first thing I'm going to show you is my Mossify Mister. Full disclosure, I am a Mossify affiliate. Uh, I do make commission on these spray bottles, but I want to give an honest review. Obviously, you know that I liked it, considering I'm including it in a favorites video. But when I first saw the design of this, I tilted my head a little bit, not gonna lie, and was like, I don't know about the design of this. I feel like it's trying to be something that's like looks cool but isn't that functional. Um, Lucas sent me one to try to see if I liked it. He knew that I was an avid user and pusher of this water bottle. This was the automatic water bottle that I was using for a really long time and I actually, the first day that I had this, I was like completely convinced and here was my first concern. I was concerned that it didn't have this sort of like flat top because if you think about when you're actually using it as a spray bottle, a lot of that weight is, you know, being bo being bore, being bared. A lot of the weight rests on your finger or your hand here. So I was like, okay, well, if this doesn't have one of those, like you're basically gonna be straining your hand to hold the weight of this. But people might see this as a con, but the capacity isn't as big as as this one. I will say that if the capacity was as much as this and it had this head, I feel like it might be a little bit too hard on the wrists, but the I, I would say that the capacity that this is is totally fine when it's full. Another reason that I love this one over this spray bottle is even though this one has like the adjustable um, nozzle where you can do like a spray or a, um, a fine mist, this, um, this, what is this called? This spray head, it is actually way more powerful and more wide of a spray than this one. So I can actually cover more space using this rather than the big one and because it is a little bit more powerful um, I just feel like it's penetrating the moss more it penetrates the soil um, better and it just makes it faster than this one so the reason that I don't mind that it doesn't have the like spray tip is because of another favorite that I'll show you at the very end but when I'm doing all my misting now in the exos and on my plant shelf this is definitely the one I'm reaching for. I actually don't even use this one anymore. I love it and I'm always gonna have it. I think it's always good to have a backup, but on a day-to-day -day basis, this is the one that I'm using and and yeah, I love it. And I actually do have a code with them if you wanted to try it and I'll leave it in the description. No pressure, you don't even have to use my code, but if you want my recommendation, I actually really, really love this um, 
this mister. Hi, baby. Um, the second planty thing I want to show you is my fertilizer, and I talked a little bit about this in my Q&A. Um, I have been using this for a few months now, and honestly, it's I've just noticed such a huge difference, not with just like the the rate that my plants are growing, but the actual foliage that are coming out. Um, I always use my fiddle leaf fig as a testament to this um, fertilizer because I've owned plenty of fiddle leaf figs. I've used so many different kinds of fertilizers, but um, using this and seeing the new growth from my current fiddle, it's like unlike any other fiddle leaf that I've ever owned. And I actually show it in my Q&A video, which I posted last week. So unfortunately, this company no longer ships outside of Europe due to some laws or there's something going on over there right now. I don't actually know what it is, but yeah, it they're not able to ship to North America anymore. I The last time that I spoke to the person on their socials, they said they were working on it, but I, I don't really know anything more than that. But if you are able to get your hands on this fertilizer, it is totally worth the money. Um, it's not even really that expensive compared to some of the fertilizers out there. The dilution is two milliliters per liter of water. And right now I'm using this pretty much every other week for my plants that are growing. Um, I wouldn't reach for this fertilizer probably in the winter unless I was um, fertilizing something that was growing like pretty rapidly. In the winter I tend to use just CalMag and Marfil. Um, I haven't noticed any like over fertilization with this. Apparently you can't over fertilize, but I'm a little bit hesitant when uh, fertilizer companies say that you can't over fertilize because I definitely have over fertilized before. Mm -hmm. But just to kind of show you some of the nutrients that they have in here, I wonder if I can read this backwards. Nope, I can't. Um, so there is nitrogen, sulfate, nitrate, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, sulfur, Magnesium, iron, zinc, manganese, boron, copper, and another thing that I can't um, pronounce. So for a full analysis, you can go to liquidgoldleaf.com and you can kind of just check out what the, um, you know, what's in here. But not joking, I, I really love this fertilizer and I think it's going to take a lot for me to switch fertilizer. I'm using it very sparingly just in case they're not shipping to North America for like another year. I, I really don't know, but I'm scared to run out of this. Um, but yes, I love it a lot. And in addition to CalMag and Marfil, like I mentioned, I feel like this is really all that I need. I don't feel the need to kind of supplement with something else, kind of like Super Thrive or Nude or Liquid Dirt. I've tried all of those. I mean, they're okay, but nothing like, nothing like Liquid Gold Leaf for sure. Oh frick, it's so hot. My armpits need some airflow. I need some airflow to the armpits, Pudge. Mom. Where's mama? Mama, mama. Um, my niece just started saying mama for the first time this week. Like really saying it this week, so that's like it's a big week for me. <laughs> um okay, where was I? Whew. So, I Google the weirdest things. I really do. I really do. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to talk about, oh, is mycorrhizal inoculants. And I've actually used this in a few videos in the past, and every time I use it, I get comments and messages like, what the heck are you sprinkling on the roots? And this is what it is. Um... I didn't really want to get into it before because I felt like I was still like learning about it and observing it and I didn't really feel comfortable talking about it just yet. But now that it's been some time and I've actually seen um, results and I've seen it in action, I feel like I'm ready to talk about it and include it in one of my favorites. So I'm going to need help a little bit because I can't, I can't remember all of this on the top of my head. but. I'm just going to tell you the benefits of mycorrhizal inoculants or mycorrhizae. So mycorrhizae are symbiotic relationships that form between fungi and plants. 
The fungi colonize the root system of a host plant, providing increased water and nutrient absorption capabilities, while the plant provides the fungus with carbohydrates formed from photosynthesis. Isn't that amazing? Like, this stuff just is basically in a relationship with your plant and your plant's roots, and they just they just vibe off each other and it's it's amazing so I was actually listen, starting to listen to a podcast about this and I'll share it once I finish I don't think I'm gonna have time this week but um, some of the benefits of mycorrhizae is that it has it wait so some of the benefits of mycorrhizae enhanced water and nutrient uptake reduction of irrigation requirements reduction need for fertilizer increased drought resistance increased pathogen resistance, increased plant health and stress tolerance, and higher transplanting success. So when I talked about this in another video, someone had mentioned on my YouTube and also in my DM saying that you're not supposed to be using this on rooting plants. Um, the brand that I use is Dynomyco. This one isn't Dynomyco, but I do have Dynomyco. And, um, Oh my gosh, my legs are asleep. Pudge, my leg is asleep. Ow! <laughs> my leg is asleep, babe. Can you just go down here? So what I was saying is that someone had mentioned in um, my comments and then also DM'd me and was saying that like you're not supposed to be using mycorrhizae on rooting plants. Uh, on the Dynamico website, which is the myco that I've used, that I used first, um, they didn't mention anything about not using it on rooting plants. Um, and I actually used this on all of my imports that were like partially rooted. If it's comp starting from scratch, I don't sprinkle it like on the stem or anything. I always make sure that there's some kind of root system to work with regardless if it's a good or bad root system. So you might want to look into that too. I'm not like an expert at this stuff. I've only been using it for a little while. I will say that some of the results that I've definitely seen is um, the increased water uptake and the like extensive root growth in a very very short amount of time. So let me. Gra I'm gonna grab my. I'm gonna grab one plant to show you an example. Well, it's not really an example, but I'll just grab it anyway. This is my Anthurium politiflorum. I've shown this in my. Uh, I think I featured this in my Anthurium favorites video, but uh, this one is actually a very thirsty Anthurium. This one was given mycorrhizae when I transplanted it from um, the pot that it was in into this pot, which is just a mix of moss and coarse perlite, cocoa husk. I think that's it. So this one is a very thirsty plant. It's actually thirsty right now. The leaf doesn't normally look like this when it's like fully hydrated. You can see that it's a little bit like sort of curled and it's not completely flat, kind of like this guy is. So typically when I would water this before, it would take kind of like a full day for the leaf to kind of straighten out and plump up. But ever since I've used mycorrhizae on here and it's developed roots with the myco in the substrate um it actually plumps up a lot faster like after a few hours so i've noticed that difference and then also just with the speed that the roots are forming um especially like on my imports there are some plants that take a lot longer to root. I've struggled a little bit with some Anthuriums like the Anthurium angomarcanum, um, Anthurium equidurens I've struggled with. So with the use of mycorrhizae, I just feel like those roots that maybe weren't looking so great at import have been able to push out new roots much faster, which has lessened the amount of stress that the plant is going through because the faster you can get roots on it the more it can rehab and bounce back after import so um the time that you can get roots on a plant i would say after import is pretty crucial but yeah my anthurium politiflorum definitely has been uptaking a lot more water faster and that was one very very obvious plant that i noticed results with i will link 
a brand of Myco that I recommend and you can they have a very very extensive FAQ I would just dissect it and I would read all of it and I if I can remember I will also insert the link for the podcast talking a bit about the symbiotic relationship between plants and fungi. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is pest control. So I've got all my like artillery of uh, pest supply stuff in here. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is this, and I don't know how to say it. It's spinosad, spinosad, spinosad. Um, I was able to get a hold of a little bit. I, I actually don't know how you can bring it in to Canada. I think, I, I really don't know. I got it from somebody and I don't actually know of a store or wherever that sells this, but this is the systemic that I'm using on my indoor plants right now. And I feel like it has been probably the number one thing that has protected my plants against pests this year because in the spring and summer, I'm usually infested with spider mites and thrips. I don't know why. I've mentioned before that BC or Vancouver is a very thrippy place. Like if you go outside and you're on a walk, just like randomly an adult thrip will land on you. And I've just been kind of paranoid. So I have been using this preventatively on everything in this house just to keep things at bay because just with everything going on, I cannot handle a, a thrips outbreak specifically. So I've been using that and then I've been using Safer's insecticidal soap. This one actually comes in a yellow, I think it's a yellow bottle and um, it's a little bit more potent as t in terms of the chemicals. And I used it once and it actually burned a, a pitcher plant that I had and it burned it burned something else I think it burned one of my Ethereum so I got rid of that and I'm just sticking with this stuff that's a little bit less harsh but still gets the job done um, keep in mind thrips will eat this for dessert don't even bother if you're gonna treat for thrips you need to go the systemic route or the predatory mite route or the Dr. Doom route um, I think that this is a Canadian brand. I think they only sell this in Canada. I believe that a comparable brand to this is that like Captain Jack's Dead Bug Spray or something. I've never used it, but just from what I've read in forums and stuff, they're, they're pretty similar. So this stuff is amazing. It literally, it does what it says. It kills thrips. Stuff like this. There's like other insecticidal soaps that'll say, yeah, they'll kill thrips, but they really won't. Um, so this stuff has been amazing. My philodendron micans got thrips twice. I'm pretty convinced that this is the one that really helped get rid of them um, for good because they haven't returned since. And then there's also this one. It's just a, it's a Go Green Botanics indoor plant spray and it's for aphids, spotted mites, white fly, and thrips. Uh, yeah, I, I don't use this one as much as this one, but I have this in the house because this was out of stock for so long. There was like a thrips outbreak in Canada, I think it was early this year, and nobody could get a hold of um, any Dr. Doom. I think one of my friends even reached out to the company and was like, when are you guys going to restock? And they were saying that there was like a whole thing, like it was in demand everywhere in Canada and they couldn't keep it in stock. So I did have a thrips outbreak during that time and I used this. It was okay, but um, it wasn't until I was able to get this that I got rid of them for good. So um, those are the things that I'm using right now preventatively as a pest deterrent. And so far so good. I want to knock on wood, but if I knock, Vince, Vince. <laughs> Not my husband. If I knock on something, Pudge is gonna go crazy. But yeah, knock on hand that I didn't just jinx myself. Oh. Oh. I had to save this for my number one plant favorite in June because I did get it this month and I got it because my friend and neighbor downstairs, Nick, who was in my Redsta cabinet setup video, he has been using one of these for his jungle plant room. 
um and i've always been intrigued by it but i was like uh, do i really want to be like pumping just to get water like if i could just pour and honestly i don't know why it took me so long this as much as you'd think that like the pumping part of it makes things more difficult or creates more work for you it actually saves a lot of time um so i just got this one at um where did i get this i got this at lowe's because we don't stand home depot i got this at lowe's and i think it was like 40 bucks they do sell this on amazon for like double the price they have other kinds on amazon but if you are specifically in canada where amazon is a total ripoff don't get it there i could send i could put the link below but like you'll save more money if you can just find it at a hardware store this one has like a few different type of like extensions and stuff they have ones that are a little bit more like simple and probably cheaper but i kind of like the things that it offered so this little tip part here comes off and you can just screw on this tip to this end and i do that pretty often because i use both like i do it both ways um when i'm watering my plants and i will show you how i do that after but yeah basically you just like pump the top here a few times and i get all my watering done now just using this can i use my um, mossify mister to do misting in the exos um but this is what i've been using to like literally just water all my plants in my exos in my tent um in my on my shelf and even on my balcony and i'm not gonna grab it it's inside this cabinet but it has a like an extension for like um a foamer because you can add like cleaning products or soap or something and you spray it and it foams so i might try to use that when i do wait i don't want to tell you it's a surprise um i might need to use it in the future or i'll try to use it in the future and there's also an extension on this thing that you can use to kind of like spray like pesticides or whatever like around the perimeter of your house i have a problem with spiders on my balcony so i might need to go that route soon i've been using like cayenne pepper and uh dawn dish soap but that's not doing anything so anyway this is my new best friend i love it so much i truly do not know how i went so long without it and i will never go without it again so if there's anything that i feel so funny just holding it like this Let me put this down like this is any better so yeah if there's anything you take away from this video i would say that if you are struggling with your watering and you feel like it's just taking too long um if you have like a tent especially like an enclosed space where you can freely spray definitely get one of these it's not even a huge investment you can find ones for like 20 25 bucks and you are going to get so much of your time back i promise you're not going to regret it so yeah let me just show you how i use this i'm going to give you guys a little peek into the tent because things are looking wild in there like i said it is hot and the tent is a lot hotter than usual so everything is pretty dry in there so yeah okay let's go in the tent of course he's exactly where i need to be um but it's been about a month and some change that i've had my mars hydro tent and i am a mars hydro partner but i put this on pudge i love this tent um this is going to be really bold but if i didn't love the sort of aesthetics of the exoterra and um and the millsbo to be honest i would just sell all of this off and just get a massive tent to fill this room because the growth in here has nothing the growth in here has nothing on the growth that happens in here the warmth has made such a huge difference and this type of warmth i'm sorry but you you really can't recreate it in here unless you're using tons of like um heat mats and stuff like that and if you've been here a while you know that i don't f with heat mats because i'm very scared of starting a fire so i love that the only heat that is coming from this tent is from the lights and it's bouncing off the walls and this is genius like it's amazing i don't know how i've gone so long without a tent um so what i'm gonna do is go off on a little bit of a tangent before i show you how to use this but most of this stuff 
is my mom's and then half is the plants that I'm acclimating for plant happens and then I would say 10% of them are mine or maybe like 20% are mine but I'll just kind of quickly show you what's going on in here just if you're curious down here are all, pretty much all the plants that I'm bringing to my mom in California uh, legally I can take over 50 plants um, for personal use meaning I'm not gonna sell them which I'm not so I just have to make sure I'm under that amount, which I think that I am going to be. It just looks like a lot right now. Like all of those begonias are one plant. So um, this begonia was actually not doing well at all. It wasn't giving me any new growth until I popped it in this EXO and it has just gone crazy. Oh, and if you're wondering about the noise, I do have two computer fans in here just to kind of keep air circulation going because it gets hot. What else do I have in here? I have some... Tradis Cantia Nanooks. Um, I think I showed this in my Redstick cabinet video. Uh, yeah, this is totally just a mom and grandma type plant, meaning my mom and grandma. Like they, they totally would love this kind of plant. So I grabbed them one of those. We have a Scadapsis Silver Lady, some um, Trubii. This is a Begonia Tamaya. And this one was not growing at all either, and it's now given me like my first new leaf since I got it. So, um, also have a ton of Ficus triangularis variegata, some pothos. This is a reverted Florida Beauty, Vericosum, Epipremnum panatum, Albo variegata in the corner. This is a modeled. I don't know why I can never un like get the name of this. Syngonium modeled mojito or something like that. And then, oh, in this corner is my crystal mag and I pollinated it with a dark form forgetii and it looks like I've got something happening if this doesn't abort, but I would be super stoked to have crystal mag dark forgetii um, berries. <sighs> in this middle section are more plants from Plant Happens. Some leaves are going out, some leaves are coming in. This is, or I should have included this as one of my favorites because it definitely is one of my favorites right now. Why is nothing focusing? Hello? Oh, okay, I guess we're just not focusing today, that's fine. So yeah, just some like random anthuriums, a Philodendron Gloriosum pink back back there. And then up here is Milano Land. And I have a um, Homolomina Thai Splash back there, Philodendron Ernestii, Crystallinum, Ernest, I think I said that already. I have a bunch of little like all my props in here. It's wild in here right now. I do need to kind of organize it but I'm saving that for another day. This is one of my favorites as well. This is a little ping and it's eating all of my fungus gnats. So very appreciative of this little guy. So anyway, that's what's going on. Things um, dry out super, super fast in here. So I'm just gonna show you how I use this guy to get everything that I need done in here. Okay, so basically you just give the thing a little pump. It's very easy to use. Um, I'm not using the little attachment here right now, but I do have it on the stream spray rather than the mist spray because I'm gonna show you how I water my plants using this. And it's super fast. So I do have this sort of nozzle thing attached now so that I could reach more in the back.
So basically I have replaced my like watering can and my watering jug with just this and because it has all of the different nozzle sprays I can do both watering and misting at the same time although I still use my Mossify Mister in my Exos because that one is more of a fine spray than this one. This one is a little bit of a heavier um, fine spray um, but yeah I can get watering done basically in just like two three minutes with this whereas before it would take me maybe like 15 minutes to water my whole tent so I love this thing so much I actually plan to get another one just because I want another one <laughs> um, so if you have been thinking about getting one if you want my recommendation I'm gonna say absolutely yes get one they're not even that expensive and you will save yourself so much time I actually even use this on my balcony and it's it's a game changer love it <laughs> excuse you all right well I said this was gonna be a short video and it was like an hour long but we made it to the end is there anything you'd like to say before we go we gotta do the usual do you want to say Thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching this week's video and we'll see you in the next one. Oh, and don't forget to thumbs up if you liked it. Do you want to give everyone a high five? Ready? High five. Bye.